Hi, this is Joris from Ethercast. I'd like to show you Embark, the open source framework from Yuri Matthias. It helps you create your Ethereum dApps. So as it's mentioning on the, on the website, it automatically depolarizes contracts for you and makes them available in your JavaScript code. Embark watches for changes in your contract code, your Solidity contracts, and it will automatically update it. Um, and redeploy them to the blockchain is, uh, if needed. Uh, same applies to the, to the front-end part of your dApp. If your HTML or JavaScript changes, it will also automatically redeploy it to the, to the test server. Installation is fairly straightforward, assuming that you have the, the Ethereum client installed, as well as the Solidity compiler and the Node.js requirements. I'm not going to cover that here in this video. Um, there are plenty links and, and resources for that uh, for that already. So first of all, I have um, Geth installed, Geth version, yeah, latest version of Geth. I have the Solidity compiler installed. I have Node installed, uh, NPM is installed as well. So that's all good. Uh, now I can install the Embark framework. All right, so this makes the Embark Comment line tool available. Version, yeah. Now I want to take you through the demo scenario. That's also outlined on the on the on the website. If I use uh, Embark demo, it will create a, a demo environment with some default settings files and a small contract and uh, front end. Okay, so now in the Embark demo folder, a couple of files are created. Let's uh, walk through them. There are some high-level configuration tools that you don't really need to modify. Um, the Grunt build tool integration with the default paths that will be uh, that will be watched and it will trigger a recompilation and redeployment upon a upon a change. Um, what's really interesting is the, the application folder, which contains the the contracts. Uh, storage as well as the HTML and JavaScript and possible CSS for your interface. And this is the folder that's watched by the Embark uh, process. Uh, there's also a configuration folder. Here you can configure settings about your blockchain, about your local development chain, as, as well as a staging chain or maybe the, the production environment. And in case you have multiple contracts, what kind of arguments they should be deployed with, if they have some kind of specific gas costs that you want to uh, modify etc um, and in the server setting you you uh, configure where the, the local web server should be uh, should be running just for the demo we don't need to modify anything uh, but these are explained on the embark website and the, and the wiki in in detail so now we can start a development blockchain this uses the the geth the go ethereum client but it's not connecting to any other node, and it's only mining if there's a new transaction coming in. So it will not take a lot of uh, CPU uh, power. So great for development purposes. So to start this blockchain, I run Embark blockchain. Now it will run Geth, it will create a couple accounts. And first it will make sure that it has mined at least enough blocks so there's a bit of a working capital for uh, uh, for deploying contracts. And as you see, it's, it's, it's done mining and it will actually stop mining until there are new transactions available. So this process, you'll just leave that running in the, in the console and maybe start a new one where you actually run the Embark process. So just leave this running in the backend. So we start another shell um, and actually I will be running the Embark watchdog. Embark run. That went by pretty fast. What it did, it uh, deployed the contracts to the to the blockchain, um, recorded the account where the, the contract is available. It's minimizing the, the JavaScript combined with the Web3 um, JavaScript API, creating the CSS static files and copying the HTML and all the, the, the generated assets to, a, to a deployment uh, folder. 
and it's running a local web server on port 8000 where you can actually test your, uh, your environment. You also see it called the compilation in the, in the Go Ethereum client. It deployed the contract and it did some mining. So the contract got, was mined and afterwards the entire mining process was uh, stopped again. So now on port 8000 of my uh, local host, I should have this, uh, uh, this, this test, this demo running. Here's a very simple application. Um, I can get a value out of the contract, I can change the value and that's about it. So it's initialized with the value of 100. I can change it by setting, change it to 55. I set the value, let's log in a little bit. We can see actually that the transactions are being sent to the, to the Ethereum node. Now if I request the value out of it, you see the state was changed to 55. What's interesting that in the contracts YAML file, you see that the, in the default constructor also there was some initialization going on. And if you have multiple contracts, you can refer them to each other. You can pass the, the contact address from one to the other. So uh, yeah, fairly, fairly complex contract structures can be uh, instantly handled that way without a lot of manual deployment uh, being required. Now let's take a look at the, the Solidity contract behind it. It's, it's very simple, just a, just a little value where the, the data is being stored, the, the initialization in the constructor, there's a setter and a, and a getter. Um, so this entire simple storage is actually made available automatically to the, to the user interface. So uh, user interface, very simple as you've seen, we, we need to include the the minimized uh, JavaScript and, and, and CSS files, these are automatically being generated by the Embark run uh, process. And if you change any of the codes, they will be uh, redeployed. Um, here's the logic for the, the set value button and the get value button, and as well as the lock output. The JavaScript behind it, I mean, there's no complex frameworks being used. Of course, you can make fancy stuff. It's uh, AngularJS and Bootstrap, Meteor, etc. But it's just as a demonstration, this is really uh, plain, plain old JavaScript with a bunch of uh, jQuery, actually. Um, so in case the set button is clicked, you see it gets the value from the, from the user interface, from the input, value, input field, and it calls the simple storage set function with the value being provided. And this simple storage is actually made available uh, as, as, as object to your JavaScript environment uh, automatically. So you don't need to do any kind of contract creation uh, wrapping for, for that. Um, same about when the getter is being uh, clicked. Again, it calls the, the, the contract, gets value out of it, displays it to the user interface, and you're uh, done with that. So now let's make a, a simple change to the to this demo, just to show you how the automatic redeployment is uh, is working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new button, which allows you to double the current storage. So in the user interface, we just create a new button. call it a double okay and in the JavaScript a little click handler for for that so we when you press the double button we actually don't need any value we just need to call the double function to the contract we want to lock the same thing from happening Okay, and we're going to implement this, this double function in the, in the Solidity contracts. So we have a function double without arguments, and we just say store data is store data times two. Okay, I saved it, and actually what you can, oh, it says there was a 
collision compilation error. So let's let's take a look what I did uh, what I did wrong. Ah, little typo. Okay, now the contract is being uh, deployed to a new address. Um, the error reported, but that's uh, that's a known issue. There's there's no real error going on. This is just some kind of internal flake of the live reload uh, that's going on. Um, you can also see the contracts being mined in the Ethereum environment. And now, if we go to the to the user interface, we do a reload. We see the, the new double value button is available again. It was initialized with 100. I click the double value, and I call it again, and we see we get 200 out of what. Oops, takes a while to get mined. 400. Now we have the new new value. So. This really makes your life as an Ethereum developer much uh, much easier. Some of the more complex stuff to take a look at. There's a there's a test environment where you can create uh, tests tests for your code and have them uh, be executed in a, in, a, in a virtual uh, EVM. Uh, there you can verify that your contract is working exactly as, uh, as planned and it's matching the specific input that you provide and you check that the result out of it is uh, working okay. Okay, so give uh, give Embark a try. Uh, there's also a Gitter chat available. If you need any uh, any support, you can chat with Yuri himself and uh, let him know uh, how, you, how you like it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.